Well, welcome everyone. Uh, before we start, I would like to acknowledge that we are all gathered here today on the traditional lands of the Stone and Nakoda nations and people, uh, as well as Treaty 7 territory. So thank you everyone for coming and to all of the chiefs who've also made it here today uh, on behalf of those nations. Well, today on this very windy day uh, is a very exciting day for all of the residents of our Bow Valley communities and all the animals who call this place home because today we are officially breaking ground on our new wildlife overpass, which is the first ever built in Alberta history outside of a national park in our province. We all know the cost of, to animal vehicle collisions, not just in terms of dollars and cents, but, it, but life. There's been talk about the potential need for one of these structures for years in our province, but the catalyst came in 2019, a day that many of us will vividly remember. A semi-truck collided with an entire elk herd on, on the highway, killing seven of the animals and leaving their carnage strewn all over the highway for the entire community to see. It was a graphic image that gripped so many of us. A petition immediately sprung out out of the Canmore community that garnered over 20,000 signatures across the nation and sparked the provincial conversation about the need for immediate change. It is perhaps a phenomenon that our urban neighbours may never fully comprehend, but total and complete human wildlife coexistence is integral to our way of life here in the valley. The elk herd that roams our neighborhoods and grazes in our children's schoolyards is as much a part of our greater Bow Valley family as our residents are. And while we were fortunate that day to have no human lives lost when the semi collided with that elk herd, but yet we must still remember that every life lost on this highway is felt by our community. And that day, that included the lives of those seven elk. They were all felt by all of us. Unfortunately, occurrences such as these are all too common here. Hundreds of animals die on this highway every year as a result of motor vehicle collisions, and it has always been only a matter of time until a human being meets the same fate. Thousands of people travel on this highway every day, and millions travel it every year. The stretch of highway from, Cal from Calgary to Canmore and Banff is integral to the functionality of our world-class tourism economy. It's also integral to the many people who live in the valley, but travel to the city for work and leisure. The construction of this overpass, which begins today, will ensure that every single individual who travels the Trans-Canada Highway, heading in or out of Canmore and Banff, can reach their final destination safely, whether they be visitors, commuter, commuters, or critters. So today is a very exciting day for our valley, and I'm very excited to welcome our Minister of Transportation up, uh, Minister Rajan Sani, to bring more, regards, or more remarks regarding this project. Thank you, Miranda. Let me begin by saying I'm just so absolutely delighted to be here today and to see all of you who have joined us today. And uh, thank you once again, Miranda, for the introductory remarks. I would also like to recognize Chief Clifford Pousset of Wesley First Nation. Thank you so much for your presence here today. In addition, we have Chief Aaron Young from Chiniki First Nation joining us as well. Again, such a pleasure to have you here today with us for this announcement. We also have uh, Reeve Lisa Roswald, MD of Vighorn. Thank you for being here. Uh, Wade Graham is joining us, a town of Canmore councillor. Thank you, Wade. And we also have Adam Leonard, the Alberta Program Manager from Yellowstone to Yukon Conservation Initiative. Such a great crowd here today for this wonderful announcement. As MLA Rosen had mentioned just last year, several elk were killed following a collision on the Trans-Canada Highway with a semi-trailer unit near Canmore. That collision underscored the need for a construction of an overpass to allow wildlife to cross the highway safely and to reduce the chances of a collision with vehicles. The Bow Valley Gap is one of the busiest wildlife corridors in this region, and this section of the Trans-Canada Highway has a very high traffic volume, especially during the summer months. The Yellowstone to Yukon Conservation Initiative has done extensive work to study wildlife migration behavior. Thanks to your work, this site was selected as a logical place for an overpass. The Bow Valley is considered one of the most important east-west wildlife connectors along the 3,200 kilometer length of the Yellowstone to Yukon or Y2Y region. During the summer months, when wildlife is on the move, about 30,000 vehicles per day travel through the Bow Valley. When complete, this overpass will drastically reduce the chances of wildlife vehicle collisions. 
The overpass will not only increase safety for wildlife, but it will save thousands of dollars each year in property damage caused by collisions. The project will include about 12 kilometres of fencing to help guide wildlife towards the overpass. Parks Canada estimates that fencing and overpasses in Banff National Park reduce wildlife vehicle collisions by more than 80%. That is a very significant number. I would like to point out that this is the first wildlife overpass to be built outside of a national park. If you have travelled the Trans-Canada Highway through Banff National Park, then you are familiar with these overpasses. In fact, in Banff National Park, between the East Gates and Yoho National Park, there are 38 underpasses and 6 overpasses along an 82-kilometre stretch of the highway. The most wildlife crossing in a single location on the entire planet, if you can believe that. Both types of wildlife crossings, underpasses and overpasses, are necessary because different kinds of wildlife will make use of different kinds of crossings. For example, there are two wildlife underpasses along this highway between here and Highway 40. Underpasses are the preferred route for animals like black bears and cougars. While the choice of grizzly bears, elk, moose and deer are crossings that are high, wide and short in length, such as an overpass. Wildlife are a major attraction for visitors to this region and we are proud to do everything possible to make sure we keep them safe. The overpass will cost approximately $17.5 million and should be open for wildlife by the fall of 2023. And this project will create 102 jobs. When complete, the overpass will look very much like the overpasses that we see through Banff National Park. It is also being constructed with future expansion of the highways in mind as it would accommodate a six, pardon me, a six lane highway expanse. And I'm honoured to announce this important project that will not only safeguard wildlife, but will also reduce the risk of collisions for visitors and residents in the Bow Valley region. Once again, I would like to express my gratitude to Y2Y for your work to protect wildlife and to advocate for crossings like this. And thank you. And now, at this very windy moment, I would like to welcome Adam Lennard, Alberta Program Manager for Y2Y, the Yellowstone to Yukon Conservation Initiative. Thank you, Adam. Thank you very much, Minister. This is a really exciting day, and I'm really grateful to be here with all of you today. And I'm really happy to be here on behalf of Yellowstone to Yukon Conservation Initiative. Why Do Why is a Canmore-based international nonprofit dedicated to protecting and connecting wildlife habitat so people and nature can thrive. We do that from Yellowstone National Park all the way to the border of Alaska. So it's an area twice the size of Alberta, and it's the most intact mountain landscape on the planet. This landscape is also home to 117 or so of these crossing structures, uh, and we're looking at more in, in a variety of places as well. The, uh, the, most, uh, the most researched, the best known, the best understood, and the most emulated crossing network in the world is right next door in Banff National Park. And this overpass here has been in the works for more than a decade. It's thanks to the hard work and the very passionate voices of so many different people that this overpass is going to help advance conservation efforts, ongoing conservation efforts, like uh, grizzly bear recovery, it will help support strong populations and large numbers of, of wildlife in the area, the kind of populations that are essential to the realization of treaty rights. And it will also help prevent car accidents, car accidents that can be deadly for people and animals and that are always very expensive and costly. So we know from many years of data collection, but also from many more years of living here and traveling this road all the time, that this spot right here is the elk spot. It is very popular for elk. It is also a spot where other species like grizzly bears, black bears, wolves, and cougars try to cross to access the habitats of the Kananaskis Valley, the Bow Valley, the Ghost, and the Stony Nakoda Nations. We know that they do that in order to connect with their broader populations and connect with the, the genetic diversity that those landscapes together can provide for them. We know also that individuals from a lot of different species try to cross the road right here 
and get hit and die all the time. And we know that other individuals approach this road and they see those 30,000 cars a day and they decide not to try to cross at all. So we're really happy, we're really optimistic, we're really hopeful today to see this, you know, this known solution to a known problem. We're really grateful and I want to thank the thousands of people who've advocated for this project over the years. And to thank Alberta Transportation and the Government of Alberta for recognizing the value of adding an overpass to the Bow Valley. This is a landscape that's very busy and wildlife need all the help that they can get. And also for adding wildlife crossing or wildlife overpasses specifically to the toolkit of the Alberta government. That means we're more likely to see overpasses in other areas of the province that need them as well. And we're really excited to see that. So I'm thrilled today. I'm, I'm really excited I'm, and I'm particularly excited to see that first elk or that first grizzly bear make use of this overpass in the really near future. So thank you and I will uh, invite Chief Clifford Poussett from the Wesley First Nation for his comments as well. Amba was dead or cunts. Thank you, Adam. <clears throat> Greetings, everyone. Thanks for coming out to this special occasion where we unveil the plans for the new wildlife corridor in our, sto our traditional stony Nakoda lands. Our elders have always been very close to all of our animals' friends for a variety of support. Food, clothing, which I'm wearing today. Telling the weather, storytelling, and visions of some selected nation members. Over the years, as the city spreads out and the highways grew busier and busier, and a lot of animals were killed due to no fault of their own. These trails were their natural and traditional paths for migration and feeding. We are very pleased to see the Alberta government has recognized this and is committed to solving the issue. Thanks again to the Alberta government, ministers, and all of the approved contractors, Ellis Don, PME, Impoverment Consulting, and everyone that has attended today. Thank you and Ishnish. Sorry, uh, I would like to call upon my colleague, uh, Cheniki Nation, Chief Aaron Young. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is a beautiful day today as we come together as God's creation, our culture, First Nations culture, Stony. We have been taught as part of our mandate to live well amongst each other, that we have to respect each and every one of us. When I say us, there are elements, the very fabric of who we are includes our animal friends, the ones that fly, the ones that walk, the ones that swim, and of course, the elements of the winds and so forth. And today, as we're standing on this spiritual land of ours, the Stony people, where over the years we have come together to do ceremonies of such, as we ask for our, for our animal friends, as for, the, for our creator to bless us, to guide us, to listen to one another, to protect one another. And today is no different. We're gathered here to acknowledge the animals in itself as we, as the governments, provincial government, the industry in itself, of course, Canmore and the ridings and the reefs and so forth, as we come together to recognize the importance of communication through trust. And as we come together with trust, we have to make sure that we res re respect one another's uh, integrity and understanding. First Nations, Chininki, Stony, Wesley, and First Nations abroad respect our animals. It's part of our spirituality. It's not a religion. 
It is a spirituality. Even every day before we drive off, we, we take the time to say, friends, our animal friends, we respect you. We respect you. Please, you respect us as well. Don't go across the road. We don't want to hit you. Those are simple things that we have been taught to respect so that we, as, as we come together, that we share this beautiful land of ours that we call Alberta, Canada. As we are gathered here in the hearts and the gateway to the mountains, we welcome each and every one that comes through here through the, through, to, to get to their destinations on the highways of Trans-Canada and so forth. We welcome them. And at the same time, we, we say respect. We, let's respect one another, especially our animals. And the construction that's going to be coming about, we hold our hands high and we grasp this opportunity because we are coming together to protect and respect our animals as, we, as they have respected us. All the territories that they had, we are slowly getting to those areas, but yet we are sharing those areas with them as well too. And today as, we, as I stand here before you, I give thanks to, to our elders for bestowing us the knowledge that I have before you as I'm sharing with you. We have been taught to trust and to share. And whatever we can, we will do that. And about a month ago, I, 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 we had a ceremony just, on, just in behind those trees to give thanks and to say, this is, this is what's going to be happening within the next year or within several moons. And at that time, we, we gave thanks and we took the pipe and we prayed and to say, please look after us as we are looking after you. So with that, I'd like to thank and give thanks to the organizers for making this happen and um, Transportation Minister. It has been a while since I last seen you, but good to see you again. Ro uh, MLA Rosen and, uh, of course, our Reeve, Lisa Rosville, as she will be coming to the podium and to tell me whatever I said was all true. <laughs> so with that, thank you. Thank you very much, Chief Aaron Young. <laughs> Definitely all true. <laughs> um, good afternoon. The Bow Valley has become a destination for both visitors and residents, and its unique topography and environment also make it a destination and home to a variety of animal species. This dual destination of both humans and wildlife is why we are here today. The success of tourism in the Bow Valley and beyond have increased the number of vehicles on the Trans-Canada Highway. It goes without saying, as the number of vehicles on the road have increased, so too have the rates of vehicle wildlife collisions. One such collision hotspot is right here, near the junction of Highway 1A and the Trans-Canada Highway. This wildlife overpass will allow wildlife to safely traverse the area between the Bow River and Kananaskis country. This project will add, also add 12 kilometers of wildlife fencing along both sides of the Trans-Canada Highway, um, connecting to the fencing already in place at Dead Man's Flats. The Dead Man's Flats G8 wildlife underpass and fencing was completed in 2004 and has shown us how this type of project can improve the connectivity and drastically reduce the number of vehicle wildlife collisions. I appreciate that Alberta Transportation has heard the concerns of wildlife experts, local environmental groups, residents and visitors of the Bow Valley. The wildlife overpass will provide vital infrastructure that further protects this environmentally sensitive area, ensures a thriving and reconnected wildlife habitat, and increases vehicle safety for everyone on the Trans-Canada. On behalf of the MD of Bighorn, I sincerely thank the Honorable Minister, our MLA, Miranda Rawson, for this major project and look forward to its completion. Thank you.
Okay, well, thank you, everyone. I'm going to wrap things up, and I just want to underscore the importance of this project today. It's been mentioned several times, but this is the very first wildlife overpass to be built in Alberta ever in our history outside of a national park. Uh, and it really is our government's way of signaling uh, to the people of the Bow Valley as well as the people of the province uh, that Canmore is not a bedroom community to ban. Canmore is part of our greater tourism economy, and we need to make sure that there are mitigations and safety safety mitigations in place, not just within those national parks, but within the communities that lead up to them as well. Uh, and in the communities that play such an integral role in our in our greater tourism economy. Um, and with the construction of this overpass, as I mentioned, we will ensure that every person who traverses this highway, whether they be human or animal, uh, will, will get to their final destination safely. Because every death along this highway, whether it, we haven't had many human or any really in late history, but um, Every death, whether it could be human or animal, is felt by our community. Um, as I said, the animals and our critters are as much a part of our Bow Valley family as our residents are. So, um, very excited for this announcement today. Uh, and I do want to thank again all of our participants in today's announcement. I want to thank Ad Adam Lenard uh, from Y2Y for their tireless and fierce advocacy uh, for these mitigations over the years. To our Minister of Transportation, Minister Rajansani, uh, for coming out on this windy day um, and joining us in beautiful Banff Kananaskis, uh, as well as Reeve Lisa Roosevelt from the MD and of course Chief Clifford Preset uh, and Chief Aaron Young from the Chiniki and Wesley Nations. So with that, I am going to open these, this up to questions. Uh, I believe Rob will be moderating the Q&A, so I'm gonna step back from the podium and let the Minister take the hot seat. MLA Rosen, thank you very much, and thanks to all of our speakers this afternoon. Uh, we do have media in person and online or on the phone. We'll get to the uh, the callers on the phone in a moment, but uh, any reporters here, uh, please identify yourself, and we'll give you uh, one question and one follow-up. Go ahead. Thanks. Uh, Greg Colgan from the Rocky Mountain Outlook in Canmore, Banff. Uh, this may be a question for Adam, but uh, just given the different species that will eventually hopefully eventually be using this how long does it take for them to adapt because it would be nice to just kind of walk up and tell them where to go but it's not that simple i would imagine so i think you're right that is a question for adam <laughs> come on up um it frankly it varies a great deal um and individuals vary a lot too the sort of standard for grizzly bears is to expect about five years for them to learn and teach their young um, there's been instances where elk are using it before it's done. So six months, might, <laughs> you, might have, you might have a sheep up there. Um, but most animals will take a little bit longer. Yeah. And you were mentioning too how, sorry, you were mentioning how um, uh, you were hopeful and looking at other spots from a Y to Y standpoint. Is there anything in the works right now or is there anything that you're hopeful you can come see in the future? <laughs> yeah, I, well, Highway 3 is, in, in the, down in the Crow's Nest Pass in southern Alberta is is one that needs probably the most work and has the most significance for an unmitigated highway for grizzly bears and, and other species at risk. Um, Wolverine use that area a lot. They're a species of special concern. Um, and so I, I, would, I would point directly to Highway 3. But I would also, you know, these systems work best as full, complete systems. Um, and the systems are never really done and unless there are no animals being hit and people getting in accidents so um, there are still opportunities in the Bow Valley and, and Canmore is probably the next place to look here yeah great all good Thanks, thank you anybody thank you. else uh, in the crowd any other media okay do you want to come over to the mic please There, Marie Convoy, Post Media. Uh, just wondering, are you looking at building any more wildlife overpasses in the future? Thank you. And Adam had just uh, talked about some areas along Highway 3. We are going to be doing some significant work on Highway 3. We are actually right now as a well, it's a, it's a significant economic corridor. So it has been highlighted, Adam just highlighted it as an area of priority that we should look at. There's nothing in the works per se right now or in our capital budget, but certainly we're going to be talking to all of our stakeholders, including Y2Y to get their feedback and, and figure out what those uh, next locations are going to be. All right, and just before, if you had a, a follow-up, uh, did you have a follow-up question? 
No, you're good. Um, just wanted to let the uh, reporters know who have dialed in if you have a question for the minister or anyone else to press star one to enter the queue. And if there's anybody out there, we will give you a, a few seconds. No, that would be it. Minister, thank you very much. Guests and uh, everybody else, uh, along with the media in attendance today, thank you. Uh, enjoy your Thursday. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. Thank you.